Hi, it's Cindy again, and welcome to lesson four of Llamas Love Lettering, a writing lettering tutorial series that I'm doing as a service to the members of the Facebook group Erin Condren Fans Gone Wild. Um, but apparently there's people who are watching this on YouTube who aren't part of Erin Condren's Fan Gone Wild. So if you aren't in that Facebook group and you have no interest in being in that Facebook group, I will be making the worksheets available in my new Etsy store when I open it in another week or so. I'll probably get the worksheets up before I get the rest of the stuff up just because, um, just because they're already done. I just have to upload them to the Etsy store and they'll be printable downloads and I'll have them up there for pretty cheap because honestly I did this originally as a free service for the members in the Facebook group but if you're not in the Facebook group you don't get it for free. So anyway last week's lesson about doing the kind of negative space serif lettering I went really fast because my my um, leg was hurting and I was trying to make a shorter video. But that didn't work out so well. So I'm going to add to that that this week's lesson is going to be kind of building on that and also really going into some different ideas for shading your letters, especially if you don't have tons of art supplies. Okay? So as a reminder, this was episode three. Lesson number three was doing this style of lettering. Okay? Where you, you thicken up these parts. And like I said in the previous video, the easiest way to learn this style of lettering is if you is if you draw like a letter let's just do B if you draw a letter kind of adding the serifs to it and then you just thicken this downstroke and thicken this downstroke like that and then because it's got these little lines you can color it in or add some stripes or however you want to do it, right? But sooner or later, you get so used to it that instead of having to draw it like that, you know kind of when to stop so that you can add this part and then add this part and you don't have this little sticking in part. And that's just a practice thing, which is why I want people to practice, practice, practice because sooner or later, the muscle memory is going to kick in. Anyway, so this week's lesson that I did, the worksheet's a little bit different than, than what I did before. This is the original, and it's pretty hard to see on camera because of how bright it is, but I did this on graph paper. I didn't do the guidelines. I didn't do any of that with my usual worksheets have. I just did it on graph paper because I wanted to just show you the basic alphabet. So if I can, I don't think I can zoom out. I can zoom in, but I can't zoom out. Well, since my camera is not really, I'm not good at adjusting it. You just see that all it is is the alphabet written out. And we're going to use this in a couple of different ways. But first, before we actually work on the shading part, I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to do a quick run through of these letters so you can watch me do them and see how I do them. And this is just another piece of graph paper, okay? I'm not going to be measuring. I'm not doing things super fancy. I'm just showing you how I write each letter so that you can get an idea of how I do it the way I do. Okay, so we'll start with A. Capital A, one line down, one line down. I add the serifs at the bottom, and then I usually add this part, and then just extend the, ser the serif, and then there. And that's the A. For lowercase a, you go around like this, and then you start at the same spot and go around again, but this time you bring it in like that. Then I add the little serif, then I just kind of curve this around, and then there you go. That's the A. You can also do a more basic A if you don't want to do the fancy looking A. Just do the circle. These are actually really easy to learn. There's your A. You add the serifs, you connect like that, and then you do this this little doing doubling up the curve. It's one of the easier things to do. So that's A. B. Now, like I said before, you get used to it where you stop 
the little pokey in part here, you get used to where you stop it so that you can add the line without that extra little bullshit going over there. Then, for lowercase b, you know that that's going to be there. So you, you don't have to do it that way. You can start with this line and then add, thicken it up. I just, I get so used to doing it that way. Now one of the things you'll notice as you're doing this, and I did it here, is that you want to try and keep the thickened parts kind of uniform. I didn't do that here. It doesn't look quite as clean as it does here on this A, where they look, you know, similar. But again, whatever. It's handwriting. If you want it to look perfect, you could do it on a computer. C. It's pretty simple. You just make the C, and then thicken that curve. Same with lowercase c. Same exact deal. Boom. Okay. D. Make your D. And then add this part. And then that part. And then for lowercase, you just make your lowercase d. And then you add your serifs. You'll see a pattern emerging here. One of the things also with like round ones like this when I'm adding the thickening is I start here and then I come around. Even though technically you could just go there. I just, I like doing it that way. I think it looks smoother. E. Now one of the things, E, I'm never quite sure how I like doing it. You can just bring the serif in like that or you can make it a little fatty. Fatty boom batty. Um, I'm going to go with that for now. And you thicken your middle and then just add your little, your little buddy here. And then this E is another one where, now this is a fairly easy one to learn how to thicken without connecting it. So you put your line and you go around and then you just give yourself the extra space. You don't have to adjust for it, you just give yourself the extra space and then you just connect it. So try that with E. E's a really good one to like check in for marks on my mat. Um, easy for to start with that. And then with F it's the same deal as E. Maybe do the fatty boom baddie if you want to or don't. There's F. Now with lowercase f, I do the curve around like this. I don't bring it all the way down usually because I don't like that look, but you can. Add a little serif on the bottom, then bring it around, and then just add the line. G. I never like how G looks for me. I still have not found one that I enjoy. I do G like that, and I thicken it, and then I thicken this part. And I still don't like it, but I just do it because it's the best I've been able to come up with. Now for regular G, regular lowercase g, add the serif, and then I usually like add it with like a little ball because I think that looks neat. Or we can do the other, the other G, this G, and I'll show you that technique with the O because it comes in handy. Little ball. Either way. Okay. H. This is not going to be a short video. Now with H, because you know they're going to be fat, you can just draw these out like this. You know? Or you can draw it like this and then thicken them and then add your serifs. Just save the connecting for last. One thing I will also bring up, when you have these connector lines like on the H or on the A or here, you want to kind of thicken them just a little. Just go over them like one more time to make them stand out a little bit more so they don't look kind of sad and depressed. Lowercase h. Now you do your curve. Leave yourself extra room so that you can go and do the inside curve. Because otherwise you're going to be doing the outside curve and that's a lot harder to control. I'm going to run out of room on this graph paper. I... That's one of the nice parts about graph paper for doing this because you can use the little graph squares to kind of control how fat you make some of this. This I. So you can see I'm getting fatter as I'm going down. Put my letters on a diet. Okay, for J. Now when you do the extra serif, you want to kind of lean it one way or the other because you know you're going to add another part. 
So I just bring it around and add the little ball. There you go. Same deal. Except this time I missed. Okay. Now K on the sheet that I gave y'all, K is pretty awkward. I'm never a fan. I start with this. Add that. Add the serif. Come down a little more. And I just add that. Or you can make it curly if you want to. I don't like any of them. So I try not to use words that revolve around K very often. Same deal, just smaller. It usually looks a little better when it's smaller. Okay, L. And then here again, fatty boom batty. Lowercase L is pretty simple. It's, it's I, just bigger. Okay, M. This is where you need to really pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, so for M, do your first line, right? Then add your serif, but take it out a little farther. You see? Now, bring it down some of the way. Then bring your other part of the M, kind of connect them. I always have to go slow, even now. You connect them like that. And then from here, you bring it down, have the serif out, and there you go. It's just something you're going to have to practice. And it, that's one of the ones that will really help you if you start it by thickening. And then with the little m, much easier. Add this, and this, leave the extra space. Inside curves. N just as much of a pain in the ass as M. Bring the serif out, bring it down, add your other, you know, leg of the N, and connect. A lot of times I'll just make this a little wide at the bottom just to keep it from looking stupid. And then with N, lowercase, much easier. You know, you could stylize and never do the uppercase M and N if you didn't really want to. Okay. O's. This is the O trick. O trick is amazing. Making your O face. Okay. So you start with your O. You make your O. Now when you get here, where you started, assuming you started at the top, keep going. But go in and stay in. Like that. Same with the smaller O. O face. O face. O face. You can use that on this kind of G as well. Because then you bring it around and then you come up here. It's one fluid motion. I am going to have to get some more graph paper. Okay. Where am I at? P. Okay. P. Now you can do P one of two ways. The way I would recommend, this is not the way I do it because I'm so used to it a different way. The way I would recommend is you start by drawing the column with the serifs. And then come up here where the serif was and go around. And then increase it. Same here. This just eliminates the need for that line that goes in here. See? Okay, with S, as I said before, S is a brat. You want to just kind of try and leave yourself the extra room. I usually go up here, bring it around. And then just bring it back in. You're just gonna. So neither of these S parts look like a normal S. Your normal S would look like this. And then you would just thicken it. That's what you want to do. Same here. You can just draw your regular S. And then draw some at the bottom. And some at the top. And that would give you this. It's just trying to get the, the look of it. T, once again, my BFFs, the fatty boom baddie. You see, you leave the serifs like that, it looks okay, but I just prefer this look. But then when I do it, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have left it the other way. So, do what you want to do, it's your writing. T, do your column, add a little serif on top, and then there you go. Now you... 
make your U, add your serif with the extra room, go around, and then just give this line like a once over so that it looks kind of even. And then with this one, you draw your U, your regular U, then you do this to the sides. See, you're just thickening it up. Some of them thicken up and you can do it that way. Other ones you'd have to just color it in to thicken them up. Okay. B. Oh, we're getting closer to X. Wait till you see the X on the worksheet I put up. It sucks. I hate X. Same concept as U for V. Make your letter with your extra serif and add the thickening. W has the same asshole tendencies as the M, but you do it like this for your first part of your W, then connect, right? Now the second one, start up here and go down to the bottom and then connect it here. If you just did a regular W, you'd have to color at the bottom here and color at the top here. Same deal with the little. This is what your W would look like without any thickening if you were doing it this way. And you add this, and then this. And that's how your W comes out. Okay, X. Let's see if I can make this one look better than the one on the worksheet. I just didn't want to do it over again. I'm lazy. Better. The problem I have with that one, you see it here. Missed. Anyway, lowercase x, same thing. You just draw a crooked column and then just do a line through. And then y, you can add the little circle on the end, extra serif, and then the same for lowercase y. And then Z. Okay, Z is another one you have to be careful with it. Bastard. Okay. So here's your top of your Z. Bring it down. Now see, I already did it wrong. See this. It needs to look like that. <laughs> That's what it would look like if you did it, you know, the right way. So try it again. Z. You want to bring this up a little short of this. Because then you're going to come up here and have it be the thickening part. And with the little boom baddies here. I'm not going to do the lowercase c, same deal. Bring it up short. See how it's not as far out as this. And then bring that guy out. And that guy is as far as that. And then you have your lowercase c. So that's the whole alphabet. I know that was probably boring to watch through. But it just gives you an idea of how I do things. Um, now, if you print your... The, the set that I did, or you use your own set. I want to give you some ideas on how to shade. However, before I do that, I want to point out that Nicole on Aaron Connor and Fans Gone Wild Uncensored made a set of practice boxes that are the size of the Aaron Condren boxes. I didn't write on this. I could. You could do like, oh, I don't know. What, what would we say this week? Um, oh, yeah. How about... It gives you just a chance to too big. That's why you practice because that happens. Anyway, I recommend these practicing. If you want to use fancy lettering in your planner, practicing is always a good thing to do first. Anyway, now that, okay, so we've got, this is the worksheet. I wanted to go over some ways that you can color your letters in, in your planner. I do this myself. Um, I use it like here, for example, right here, I colored in lettering that I did in my little, little pukey face. I colored those in, in my planner to make it look kind of nifty. Um, mom and RJ time right here. Let's see it. It's another one that I colored in. So I'm going to give you some options to doing that in your planner or in general for shading your letters. But all of these that I have in small doses do not bleed through your planner. 
test them yourself if you want to before you try. You can use this in all other aspects as well, but I'm thinking just from the perspective of bleeding through your planner. Often what I'll do is I'll take just a colored pen. This is a, a, a Stabilo pen, but a Statler, a Statler pen would work as well. I don't know where all my Statler pens went, but like a Statler would work as well. And you could use this to, you know, just color it in. And I do like the sloppy coloring. I don't even, I don't even try because I like that look. Or you can use it to add stripes, polka dots, these little curlies that kind of make a cool effect. Anyway, that's one way to color in your letters. Or you could use these to letter yourself and have it just be colored lettering. You can do the same thing. I've also used, sometimes I use these Le Pens. I like these because they're really bright. You know, you can just do patterns, experiment. That's what practice is for, you know. Um, or do like fat stripes. You know, you could also use it to add like a drop shadow like I talked about. So, Statlers, Stabilos, Le Pens, Flares. Flares work good too. Just test them out on your planner if you want to to make sure they don't bleed. Anyway, that's one way to do it. I got a lot of questions about these Tombow markers. I've tested these in my planner. They don't bleed through as long as you don't like pile them on there. I like to use these for gradients. So these are two colors that are close to each other. So you fill the letter in with the one color. And then you add a second color for the gradient. Now you do that, it's chances are it might try to bleed through a little bit. So you might want to just do the darker color. And then color the lighter color without actually going over them to keep that from, from getting like bleed through because you can kind of see on the back the difference. These are also, they have the calligraphy tips. So you can practice doing calligraphy lettering. I love to use these with the calligraphy tip for doing drop shadowing because they're so like buttery. You see that? Like they just do it so easily. That one's kind of light. Let's try this one. Buttery. Anyway, so these work great for that. They also have the regular tip so that you can use to add stripes or the scribblies or whatever you want to do. So Tombow markers are great. I also have some of these Tim Holtz distress markers. They're also water-based and they have the same kind of tip situation, but it's a lot finer of a tip. So if you want to like add polka dots in like a more subdued color, you can. And they also color in really well. I love the sloppy. If it doesn't stay in the lines, that looks good too. It makes it look like that effect, especially with a darker, a darker a darker kind of um, color. This is more subdued, so it looks neat with that, with the brighter colors too. Anyway, these also don't bleed in small amounts. And then there's these. I got these from the Bye Bye Birdie Co-op scrapbooking supply buy, but I'm sure that there's other metallic like scrapbooking pens out there. I wouldn't use the Sharpies. Sharpies tend to bleed a lot, but if you can get yourself a metallic one, these are also fun to color in with. And like you see, I don't usually make things look finished. I think doing this like kind of scribbly look adds to the character of it. You see what I'm saying? So metallic markers can be good. I use these in my planner sometimes to add a little bit of um, pizzazz or maybe because I'm just bored with the other colors and I want to use something else. I'm looking for an example in my planner. 
a recent example. I know I did it recently, so I'm not really sure why I can't find it. Obviously, my brain is not working the way I think it should be. Hello, where are they? There we go. Okay. Art time. I did that with this with the silver one. You see, it kind of goes over the black pen, and then here on this last day, I used like a kind of a rose metallic pen. Anyway. So those are some basic pen ideas. A lot of these you probably already have. You can use other markers as long as you test them first If you in your planner. If they're not in your planner, you can use Copic markers, you can use Prismacolor markers, you can use all sorts of other markers if you're not worried about the bleed. Now, another thing that I've recommended to some of you before are these gel stick highlighters. They're also called Bible highlighters. You can usually find them on Amazon, I actually got mine from Happy Scrappy. She carries the this a bigger color pack. There's all sorts of colors that it comes with. It comes with like purples and blues and dark greens and pinks and anyways, like 10 of them. I love Sam at Happy Scrappy. I think she's rad, so I buy from her. But they do carry smaller packs of colors called Bible Highlighters on Amazon. And they're, they're creamy, kind of a stick so they don't bleed through and they feel kind of waxy. So those are fun too to use, partly because they, since they are highlighters, they have this like bright kind of, it's hard to see with the lighting in here, but the consistency of them, it's just very, almost like 3D sometimes it feels like, because they are sitting on top of the paper. See, I love those and you can layer those as well that and then add a little yellow just for some neat looking effects. I've used these in my planner. That first thing I showed you, the, um, the puke, I did that with these highlighters. One of these days, one of these days I will get this whole make sure the, phone, the camera has space thing right. Anyway, so these you can get, the, I was talking about the highlighters, the Bible highlighters, um, for my phone ran out of space or my camera ran out of space. Bible highlighters on Amazon, or you can get them on happy scrappy if she has them. And these work great. They do not bleed in your highlighter in your, in your, um, in your planner. They are really bright. I've used them in my art. This is okay. Whatever. No space upside down, but I use them here and I love the effect. Anyway, those are fun. Totally worthwhile, I think. And they're fun to bring around with you. You can also blend them with water, not in your planner, but in general, you can get a, like a water brush or like a paintbrush with some water and you can kind of, they're water soluble, so you can kind of blend them together and it looks really neat. Okay, and then the final thing I was gonna suggest in your planner is colored pencils. These are Derwent color soft color pencils, but you can use any kind of color pencils. You can use Crayola color pencils. You can use generic colored pencils. You can use Prismacolor, but you can use them to do a really soft kind of effect. The same kind of gradient, like the drop shadow. Do it like that, and then you can add some color that way. It's just a way to take your lettering to the next level. I love the black and white look, but it's also nice to add just a little bit of color to make it look kind of kind of neat. Anyway, so those are some different things. I will list them in the comments or in this on the YouTube video. The information area. Sorry if I seem a little tired and disjointed. It's been a long day and there's been a lot going on. Like I said, you'll be able to find the worksheets in the group or pretty soon you'll be able to find them on my Etsy shop. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Llama Loves Lettering. Llamas Love Lettering. I will see you next week. Please follow me on Instagram if you want to. Um, my handle is... handle is on Instagram and on Instagram or in the comments here or on the group if you're there please let me know suggestions for other videos you want I've got a few more in the pipeline but 
pretty soon I'm going to be coming up to the end of what I just thought of off the top of my head. Anyway, I will talk to you next time. Have a good day.